Welcome back to VTK Photography. We're going to see the Nikon's 100-400 f4.5-5.6 VR S-Line lens. That has come for review. Let's start the review. Let's talk about the build quality of this lens. The lens is about 1.4 kilos, which is 1,400 grams. Okay, um, but when it's paired with the Z9, it doesn't feel too front heavy is what I think. But when I combine it with the Z6 bodies or Z7 bodies, of course, I feel a little bit front heavy. Of course, it is going to be a little bit misbalanced mis over there. But when it's combined with the Z9 body, it is fabulous. It's properly balanced, feels excellent in hands. When we talk about the optical design of this lens, we have 25 elements in 20 groups. And the lens has six normal extra low dispersion elements and two super low extra dispersion elements. So the chromatic aberration is virtually eliminated. Unless you zoom into like 300% or 400%, you get to see a slight glimmer of chromatic aberration in purple fringing. Otherwise, this lens is easily free of chromatic aberration. It's totally eliminated, in my opinion. It's really crystal clear. We have two different coatings in this lens to reduce uh, the flares and ghosting problems and also to retain contrast in backlit situations as well. And the lens performs excellently in those situations. And this lens has nine blade aperture. So we get proper circular bokeh, wide open. And also when you close the aperture down, you get the nine-sided shape, which is the nonagon shape. So that is common for any lens, but I'm just letting you know. And the front thread of this lens is 77 millimeters, which means not so expensive ND filters and not so expensive CPL filters. But this lens al already has a 5.6 aperture, but I'm not really sure how much of a use an ND filter would be for this lens but anyway it could change with your situations but just letting you know the lens has proper weather sealing because we get to see the the rubber gasket in the back of the lens so we get proper dust resistance and also splash resistance so we can use this lens with confidence in different weather conditions outdoors so like any S-Line lens, this lens also has the control ring. We can use this or customize this or program this for changing apertures, changing ISO values, white balance, exposure compensation and whatnot. So um, this control ring is also pretty smooth. It's not as smooth as the 7200, which was actually a negative thing in my opinion. But this lens has the proper friction to it. So that's a good thing. And this lens also has two customizable buttons. Um, so we can program this for any kind of functionality that we want. I usually have this for the autofocus functionality. We'll press, the, press the button and it focuses. So rather than having the back button, you can also have the back button focusing and also have the lens focusing as well. So I use it that way. We can program it for any way that you want. And this lens also has the top LCD display here, which could be helpful in low light situations, but um, it's not an extraordinary addition in my opinion, but it could be useful for people who would really need it. And this lens extends while you zoom, okay? And the most important thing is the center of gravity of this lens is well maintained even when it's completely zoomed out or completely zoomed in. So it doesn't shift too much, which is a really good design in my opinion. And also the, the throw of the lens is 80 degrees. And this lens is virtually silent. Absolutely no sound whatsoever, except for this. No, the friction with the zoom ring, that's it. But when you're using the focus, it is zero sound. It's totally silent. So for wildlife, this is one of the best things to have. And this lens does not have a vibration reduction button on it so you can't turn it off using the lens it is only driven from the camera body and it is something that i don't like honestly because i don't want to jump into the menu all the time ch change the settings from the menu of the camera i would like to have a switch on the lens a physical switch which i always prefer and also we get about 5.5 stops of vibration reduction combined with the camera body this lens does not suffer from zoom creep. So I've turned this lens to 400 millimeters now. No zoom creep. It does not fall down on its own weight. 200, no problem. 300, no problem. 135, no problem. 100, obviously no problem. 
sharpness of this lens is tack sharp in the middle of the image, even in 100 millimeters, 400 millimeters, the center of the image is brilliantly sharp. It's crystal clear, absolutely no problem at all. The sharpness drops a little bit towards the edges, wide open. We are talking about wide open apertures, you know, 4.5 and 5.6 apertures. The sharpness tends to drop a little bit and that uh, change is also not noticeable unless you pixel peep into the lens and into the images. So if you don't pixel peep, that's not a problem. But if you if you choose to use this lens for landscape, I would usually step down the aperture by at least one stop. So um, if I'm shooting at f8, the sharpness is retained across the image. So absolutely no issues there. So sharpness of this lens is not a concern at all, in my opinion. The closest focusing distance on this lens is about 0.75 meters or 2.45 feet when you are in 100 millimeters. Um, so which is a good thing for tele-zoom lenses like this. Let's talk about the autofocus performance on this lens. The speed of focusing, the first thing, this lens is blazing fast, seriously. If you ask me, I wouldn't say it's on the same speed as the 7200 2.8 VR lens. But this lens is almost that. It's like 95% of that speed. It is really, really fast. It's blazing fast. But I would say the 7200 is still faster than this lens. Slightly faster than this lens. But this lens is awesome actually for for any kind of photography any kind of wildlife photography and even flying birds we shot a lot of flying flying birds with this lens it tracked them so well unless the background became pretty busy with high contrast because we already have a 5.6 aperture so the background blur is not that uh, pronounced like a 2.8 lens or any larger aperture lenses so when the background becomes a little bit contrasty and less of a blur we might run into some focus tracking issues but if we have a good separation the lens keeps up with the subject all the time really really good and that problem is not completely owned by the lens is my opinion it could be from the camera body as well I mean generally when lenses have large apertures, we have a really good subject separation and it is easier for the camera to, camera's artificial intelligence to track that subject. But generally, when the lens is sh stopped down, it is easier for the camera to focus on the subject. So it is, it's, it's a balance. We already mentioned that lens has a variable aperture which is 4.5 to 5.6 but at what range at what zoom do we get which aperture at 100 millimeters we get 4.5 aperture at 200 it is f5 at 300 millimeters it's 5.3 and 400 millimeters it's 5.6 i was rather shooting this lens with only 5.6 aperture especially when i was shooting videos because i didn't want i, I did not want my um exposure to change when I was zooming in. So if I kept this on 5.6, it's going to be the same exposure for 100 millimeters and also for 400 millimeters. I would not run into that, you know, darkening and brightening issues in my shot. So I would rather use this lens at 5.6.
unless it's absolutely required. All right, let's talk about the bokeh performance of this lens. Keep in mind, this is a 4.5 aperture bokeh and 5.6 aperture bokeh. So we will not be able to expect a completely obliterated background. We will still be able to make out what, what's there in the background, but the, sub the subject separation is pretty smooth. And the bokeh does not you know, cry for attention. So it doesn't grab your attention all the time. So it's, it's pretty smooth. It's totally gone, but you can still make out what's there in the background. So the pa with just the pattern of the background, you can still say what's there in the background. It's not completely, totally washed out background. So keep that in mind. You get a really good subject separation with this lens, is what I'm trying to say. All right, who is this lens for? Who? What is my recommendation if you ask? Um, I would say this is a wonderful training lens. Rather than investing in a 402.8 immediately, this could be a first stepping lens, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, because finding the subject at 400 millimeters with this lens is pretty hard, let alone tracking it. Finding the subject itself is so hard with this lens at that focal length. So if you are buying a 402.8 lens without any training, it's going to be a huge disappointment. So this lens could be a great training lens to start and to get used to in wildlife photography and this lens costs 2700 us dollars i'll talk to you guys in the next video until then bye bye